Let me just get this out of the way. Um, ever since I had my lap band surgery, people have been telling me they can't see me behind the mic stand. Can you, can you all see me now? All right, you, you all know what the lap band is? Okay, if you don't know, it's a little device they put on my stomach to keep the food from packing in there. It's only little, little tiny pieces, no more. What is that? Oh. So, um, but, you know, when I first talked to the doctor about getting the lap band, I was a little bit concerned. Um, I, I think I was confused. I had lap dance, lap band. They sound so much alike. And I was really afraid that I was going to spend the rest of my life with ZZ Top, like jumping up and down on my crotch. And that just wasn't my style. But I had to do something. I had gotten so big that every time it rained, I would have hundreds of people running to seek shelter right up here. <laughs> And um, so at this point, I'm, I'm down almost 80 pounds. And thank you very much. You know, I think that's really not the hard part, though. The hard part is that, well, just you need to know a little bit about me. You know, I'm, I'm gay and I'm Jewish. So I never had been in the majority of anything. You know, it's like I know I'm a white man, but you know, the gay and the Jewish, that's how uh, rule that out. But being obese, I was in the majority in this country. You know? They keep telling us all about it. And now that I've lost so much weight, I mean, really, you know, I, I'm so afraid you're going to hate me. So, please don't. Please don't. Um, so I, I guess another important thing about me is that when I'm not doing comedy, uh, I'm a psychologist. And um, I really don't like being a psychologist. I mean, these people walk into my office all the time, they sit down, and they start telling me their problems. Like I care. <laughs> it's, it, it's a hell of a way to make a living these days, too, because the insurance companies, they just don't want to pay for anything. I mean, you could be in the hospital and they'll rip you out of the bed and say, we're not paying anymore. You know? And I saw on the news, yeah, like a couple of weeks ago, tell me if you've seen this, that down on the Mexico border, there was a, a drug rehab program. And this this group of addicts was sitting in, drug, in group therapy, getting their drug rehab, and these bandits broke in, shot up the room, killed all the addicts. And they thought it was the drug lords who were getting pissed at them because you know, they were giving up drugs and that was going to cut into their profits. I have it on a really good source, it was Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> they just didn't want to pay for that treatment. I'm sorry, I saw your face. Do you work for Blue Cross Blue Shield? Oh, okay, good, good. Um, so, you know, talk about healthcare reform, you know. And Obama's got a lot of writing on healthcare reform right now. I mean, he knows that if he doesn't win this healthcare battle, he has to get demoted to Secretary of State. <laughs> for those of you who are not laughing, you'll get it later also. So, um, so another thing about me is that I'm a middle child. And any other middle child here? Children here? Okay, you know how much that stinks, right? Okay, everybody else is going, oh, another whiny middle child. But I can prove it, all right? Well, good example, when I was 20 years old, I was in college. I went to college in Massachusetts. I grew up on an island. Oh, another Massachusetts person. So, I was, I was in my dorm room one night, and the telephone rang, and I picked it up, and it was my mother. And what I hear is, how did you bring my lamp? Mom, what are you talking about? My lamp, it's broken. Which lamp, Mom? You know, the genuine imitation Ming Boss lamp with the two three-way bulbs? That lamp. Okay, Mom, and what's wrong with it? It's broken. Well, Mom, you're not in New York, I'm in Massachusetts. How could I have broken it? I have two brothers at home. Maybe it was them. Don't give me lip. I know it was you, it had to be you. Your older brother, he's old enough. He would never do something like this. Your little brother, he's too young. He couldn't do something like this either. It had to be you. But mom, I'm like four states away. Don't give me lip. Ma, don't mom me. Just wait till your father gets home. Yeah, and what? He's gonna spank me over the phone? I'm not really worried about it. But it really wasn't just my family who treated me like as an only child. The whole universe treated me like an only child. Now I see the doubt on your face, but let me try to prove it to you, okay? I grew up in a town called Massapequa. We produced a lot of famous people, but when I was there, the people that were gone from the most famous was this whole acting family called the Baldwins. And my oldest brother, he went to school with Alec. 
Okay, now we didn't know him as Alec, we knew him as Xander, but he's pretty famous, right? You watch him every week on 30 Rock, you know, good person to go to school with. Right? My little brother, he got two of them. He got Steven and Billy. Not great fame, but when you put them together, they, they're pretty famous, right? Who did I get? I got Danny, right? What's Danny's claim to fame? Celebrity rehab. <laughs> okay, does that prove it? Okay, thank you very much. Um, you know, so anyway, I had a really good job in psychology, but I lost that. Um, didn't really lose it. I mean, I know exactly where it is. They just sort of said, we don't really want you to have this job anymore. So I've been sitting at home a lot, writing comedy and being on Facebook. You know? <laughs> what they really should tell you, though, is that Facebook is crack for the unemployed. <laughs> you can lose your entire day in front of Facebook. I love to do the quizzes. Right? Anyone else do the quizzes on Facebook? I mean, some of them are great, but the one that I really love is the one that I did a couple of weeks ago called What Kind of Vagina Are You? <laughs> Me? I'm the big, floppy kind. Now, the only thing is, as being a gay man, I don't have a lot of experience with vaginas, so I'm not sure if that's good or not. You know? I mean, is that like, Good for sex or good for carrying things to the market, you know. Um, anyway, but you know, then there's other things that I get involved with. Like I'll be sitting there, friends will see I'm on, so they'll send me a drink. And I'm a really nice guy, I don't want to insult anybody. So I'm gonna take your drink and I'm gonna drink that drink. Unfortunately, 22 years of sobriety down the tubes. Not really, just 21. But um you know, the other thing I do with my friends is this lick my lollipop thing. Well, I was doing it up until I licked one and got swine flu um, and decided this wasn't such a good idea either. So, uh, anyway. Um, the hardest part for me, though, about being unemployed is you know that competition you have with your friends? Like, my job's the worst, my job's the worst, my job's the worst, or my job's the craziest? Well, I always won that one because I worked in a psych hospital. I mean, it was definitely the craziest. Of course, that was the staff. <laughs> Trust me, when you get to know mental health people, you'll know we're the craziest ones in the house. <laughs> so, you know, I have one, one last thought I really want to share with people before I leave. It, it seems like today, people want to be things that they're not. Mm -hmm. So, I have some friends, and they really want to be street, or they really want to be black. And I, that could be, like, it has to do with Obama, you know, so let's be fine. But they like to talk street. So Labor Day weekend, I get a text from a friend of mine. And I'm reading it, and it says, Yo, dude, you go to the beach this weekend? There's going to be mad peeps there. And I'm like, mad peeps? How did your chicken-shaped, sugar-coated marshmallow they're babies. I, I just didn't get it. You know, and I mean, the other question that I brought up for me is, like, if a pink went to the beach, wouldn't it melt in the sun? <laughs> anyway, that's just about my time. My name is my parents. We have a great audience. Please remember, take your waitresses. They're working very hard for you. Okay, and make sure you fill out those...